Captain Hut, straighten up there, soldier, because today we're taking you to boot camp so you can learn what it's like to leave the civilian world behind and become a soldier in the US military. Well, actually, we went ahead and had our favorite lab rat and the third from the bottom in importance writer go ahead and relive his boot camp days as we had him live out his life for 30 days like he was back in boot camp. What does boot camp do to a person? How does it change your behavior? Let's find out as you tag along with our boot camp for 30 days challenge. Day 1 When I first got this challenge assigned to me, I had such intense flashbacks that I shuddered. I've been out of the military now for a decade after a 6 year stint and I can still remember my day 1 in boot camp like it was yesterday. It wasn't really that shocking a transition going from civilian life to boot camp. My whole family practically is military and my dad used to be an airborne instructor. I'd trained with his classes as a teenager and he almost even got permission to have me jump with him during my senior year, but I'd have to wait until I actually joined the military to get my wings. Turns out if anything had gone wrong, it would have been a bureaucratic nightmare, me being a teenager civilian and all that. But I still did PT with them in the morning, even trained on the jump platforms, and yeah, got yelled that just like I was any other recruit. Fun times, but my point is that it wasn't a big shock to transition to boot camp. Boot camp, however, is definitely unpleasant. Though I hear stories about how cake kids today have it. If you went through boot camp recently, can you please let us know in the comments if it was difficult having to eat your filet mignon without steak sauce while your drill instructors cut it up into neat little slices and fed it to you? I realize that I sound like the old timers, how much harder things were in my day. But seriously, from what I've heard of boot lately, it was definitely harder in my day. I guess we were actively at war back then though, and I know that for some of the kids who had no experience with the military, it was jarring to have them see soldiers missing arms and legs for the first time. The point of boot is to break you down, to turn you from a civilian into a soldier, a sailor, an airman, a marine. And that's a pretty drastic transition to make. All the yelling, the screaming, the insults, although I hear they don't do that anymore, and the PT or physical training is all meant to break down your defenses so you can be rebuilt. You're meant to learn discipline, teamwork, leadership, and get mentally and physically tough. Because, let me tell you, there's nothing harder in life than the battlefield. Like the old adage goes, the more you sweat in training, the less you bleed in combat. So, yeah, even though it makes no sense, the sleep deprivation, the screaming in your face, the constant PT until you're well past physical exhaustion, it's all for a reason. And I can't tell you the number of times once I was in the active military that I was in situations where I was operating well past my mental and physical limits, and awfully glad for the training that had prepared me for these situations. By the way, I hear that in boot camp now, you get 8 straight hours of sleep a night. Wow, do they fluff your pillows for you too before the DIs tuck you into bed with a warm cocoa? So unfortunately, I won't get sent to a real boot camp for 30 days. Instead, I have to live my life as if I were at boot. That means trying to recreate the experience as close as possible in my civilian life, which means a lot of sacrifices are going to have to be made. It's intriguing, really, because I know boot affects you psychologically, but this time I'll get to actually make those observations and write them down. I've taken some measures to make this experience as close as possible to the real thing, though obviously still pretty far from it. First, I've cleared my schedule of any social events. In boot, you don't get any liberty, or at least I didn't, though today you guys probably got weekend water park trips and passes to the fair when you were feeling blue. During my two months at boot, I think I got a grand total of 48 hours of liberty the entire time. So if I didn't get to dip out to the movies back then, I'm not going to now. Secondly, I'm going to leave the apartment I share with my girlfriend and move into my friend's place for the duration. She's a travel blogger and gone frequently to work for magazines, so I'll stay alone at her place. I got to contact family once a week if I was lucky, so I can't be in contact with the girlfriend this whole time except for one hour every week. That includes no texting. Third, I'll be recreating all the PT I used to do, and even doing extra PT as if my unit was being punished, which happens all the time. Fourth, no amenities for the duration except books. No TV, no internet, no video games, just reading books for entertainment and that's it. I'll check in at the end of each week as usual. To be honest, this is not a challenge I'm looking forward to. At real boot camp, you got camaraderie of 30 to 40 other guys, but here I'll pretty much be alone for the whole duration. This one's gonna be tough. Day 7 First week down, and man, I remember now all the annoying things I hated about boot camp. Though I'm glad there's aspects I'm not having to relive. So my days start at 0445, exactly like in boot. 
I don't have a very pissed off drill sergeant dragging me out of bed by my foot though, so instead I found some audio recordings of drill instructors screaming and yelling, and each night I set the alarm that automatically triggers the stereo system to play a mix track I made at very loud volume. It's disturbingly close to the real thing, and I about had a heart attack the first morning. After waking up, I give myself 10 minutes to make my bed. Yep, hospital corners and everything. I never got the art of hospital corners down, and I used to get yelled at and punished for it constantly. Along with making my bed, I have to be outside and ready for PT by the end of 10 minutes. If I'm late, I punish myself with extra PT. Then I do a morning routine alternating between push-ups, jumping jacks, sit-ups, burpees, and mountain climbers, which are all the exercises I can remember. And then I go for a two-mile run while listening to cadences on my earbuds. For those of you who don't know, cadences are those songs that military formations sing as they run, which makes running harder because you're singing while out of breath, but in a weird way makes it so much easier because you sort of become part of a machine. You hypnotize yourself into just running and the exhaustion seems far away. After PT, I give myself 20 minutes for the famous three S's, shit, shower, and shave. Those 20 minutes also include completely cleaning the bathroom so that it's spotless. I then inspect the bathroom and if I find anything out of place or dirty, I punish myself. Yep, more PT. Honestly, at this point I'm starting to feel like a masochist. By the way, if you're on your way to boot and you get assigned to clean the toilets or sinks, after you scrub them, rub the porcelain down with your bare hands. Yes, even the toilet. It's gross, but the oils in your skin will make the porcelain shine and make any stray pubic hairs stick to your hand. Just make sure you wash your hands thoroughly afterwards, without messing up a sink all over again, of course. Although, I don't know, maybe in boot camp today they hire maids to clean your toilets and make your bed for you. My absolute least favorite part comes next. Breakfast. Back in boot, we had to eat according to a system. You would form a line along with everyone else, maintaining the position of attention the entire time you were in line. Drill instructors would wander through the line and very swiftly punish anyone whose position of attention wasn't perfect. We shared lunchtime with our entire company though, so there would be hundreds of us, perfectly silent and waiting our turn as the line slowly shuffled forward. Sometimes you'd wait half an hour to finally get your food and sit. When you did get your food though, you had to fill in rows of tables with people starting from the front of the chow hall to the back, and nobody at your table could sit and eat until the entire table was full. Then you would all sit as one and begin eating. You had to eat fast, too, because you only had as long to eat until the table in the row across from you began to fill up. The moment that table was full and those guys sat down, your ass had better be getting up to trash your tray. All in all, you had about three to four minutes to eat as much as you could. I distinctly remember sneaking food out of the chow hall, and I never got caught once. So I give myself four minutes to eat, and I've tried to recreate a food menu for breakfast, lunch, and dinner as close to possible as what I remember eating. For breakfast, that means a lot of eggs and oatmeal. As soon as the alarm rings, I trash whatever I didn't eat. This first week I found out that I'm definitely rusty and have gone hungry quite a bit. It's amazing how fast you learn to eat when you need to. For the rest of my day, I have a strict time set for lunch and dinner, as well as lights out. I also had a friend who programs whip up an app for me as a favor, which randomly sets off an alarm throughout the day. The frequency and timing of the alarm are totally random, but I use it to simulate the countless times throughout the day at basic that you're getting yelled at and disciplined with PT. So every time the alarm goes off, I drop and alternate between push-ups, sit-ups, and burpees. Burpees suck, by the way. I don't watch TV, cruise the internet, or anything like that. Instead, I let myself read for entertainment, and of course I work on my writing. All in all, the experience is definitely not like the real thing, but I feel like I've recreated most of the highlights. The girlfriend is taking this much harder than I am though, especially because she was only allowed to talk to me for one hour today at the end of the week. She has to visit, but that's not possible, so we can only talk on the phone. I think she really, really misses me. Oh, and she was not happy about me shaving my head because, yep, I did that too. Keeping a buzz cut is pretty integral to the experience, and I haven't shaved a head since I left basic, mostly because I'm seriously ugly when I'm bald, so very grateful I have great hair genes. Day 14 It turns out that without all the yelling, marching around, time on the firing range, classroom instruction, the boot camp is pretty damn boring. Not being allowed to watch TV, play video games, cruise the internet, or even just go for a drink with friends is extremely boring. I remember now that this was the part I hated most about boot. I didn't care about the yelling and screaming and constant PT, but the isolation and being cut off from the outside world was a killer. 
If it's hard on me though, it turns out it's way harder on the girlfriend than I ever thought. She has to leave frequently for different movies or shows that she works on, sometimes even for a month or two at a time, but we always have Skype, FaceTime, texting, phone calls. I even send her handwritten letters. Also, if she's gone for more than two weeks, I typically fly out to her or she'll fly to me. Now though, there's practically zero contact between us except for our one hour week on Sunday. I can tell she's really lonely and she even sounds depressed. This week I kicked up the morning and afternoon PT to three mile runs because two miles is for the first week just to condition you. I really super hate running. Always did and the military loves to make you run. But I found out that listening to cadences actually makes it easier. I've been slipping back into that weird hypnotic state I used to operate in. Kinda wish I had a group to run with so we could actually sing cadences together. It would make it easier. The alarm app on my phone is driving me insane, although I guess that's the point. Sometimes it goes off 5 minutes after it just went off, so I have to drop down and do another 30 push-ups or burpees I randomly rotate. But I guess that's sort of what happens when I was in boot. Somebody was always messing up, and the military loves to use group punishment to fix mistakes. I've also been waking up each night to do 1 hour fire watch, which I randomly rotate through. So for 1 hour I walk through my friend's empty condo with a flashlight in my hand, and if anyone could see me they probably think I'm the world's biggest weirdo. I am recreating a boot camp experience for the sake of an online entertainment show though, so I guess I am pretty weird. There's not much to report, except boredom. Luckily I'm an avid reader, but I miss the outside world. Day 21 Last week I wrote the girlfriend a letter because I missed her, even though geographically speaking we're only about 8 miles apart. The mailman that delivered that letter must have assumed I was the laziest person in the world. She sent me one back and I immediately remembered how morale boosting it was to get mail in basic, and during my months of training after. If you know anyone in basic training or that's going soon, do them a favor and send them a letter. That goes double if you know anyone who's deployed overseas. Oh, and send the person overseas baby wipes. Seriously, baby wipes are a godsend when you're living in a hole in the desert. Just don't send anyone in basic baby wipes or anything else. One guy in my unit got sent a tin of cookies by his mother, and the drill instructors harassed him for days over it. And they ate his cookies right in front of him. Man, now that I think about it, being a drill would have been a lot of fun. This week the running went up to 4 miles, once in the morning and once in the late afternoon. Honestly, at this point, I might be confusing my basic training with my training training for the various schools I went to after basic, but I know for a fact that we did a lot of running either way. I've always stayed in good shape, but because I hate running, doing the 2 miles the first week was killing me. Now I'm kind of surprising myself with the way I'm able to cope with 4 mile runs. I mean, I'm still smoked at the end of it, but I'm not dying the way I thought I would be. This combined with the very fast eating, remember I get 4 minutes for each meal, has made me shed a lot of extra pounds. My abs are absolutely popping now, which makes sense since I basically run like an idiot all day long. I've even learned to eat faster and I typically can finish my entire meal by the time the alarm goes off. It's not pretty, but I manage it. Food in basic is important, which is why they feed you very high calorie stuff to help your body cope with all the PT. You're always left hungry though, and that's why if you did ever pull kitchen duty, oh man, that's a godsend. Yes, you have to clean thousands of dirty dishes and pots and pans, then scrub down an industrial sized kitchen, but your reward is you get to eat whatever you want as slow as you want. Kitchen duty or KP as we called it was a godsend and I would stuff my face every time I could. My morning breakfast routine reminded me of an incident from basic, though which still haunts me to this day. One of the guys at my table was sick, really badly congested and probably had the flu or a really bad cold. As we're shoveling food into our mouths, suddenly he stops and his body jerks and before he can do anything, he sneezes completely involuntarily. More snot than I've ever seen in my life flew out of his nose and into his oatmeal. Poor kid was so terrified of the drill instructors and so damn hungry that he ate it. He ate oatmeal loaded with mucus. It was the single most disgusting thing I've ever seen, and I randomly remember it to this day. In non vomity food news, this week I've changed my midday meal to MREs, which I snagged from a surplus store nearby. At this point in basic, we started spending a lot of time in the field, and that meant no hot meals, just MREs. Honestly, I've never hated MREs the way some people do. In fact, I always kind of liked them. The jalapeno cheese is off the chain. And I remember that it and the cocoa powder was basically currency. You could literally buy things from people using them. One week and two days left and honestly I can't wait to get back to my normal life. See you guys at the end. Day 30 Today I finally came home and the moment I walked through the door the girlfriend literally threw herself on me, very quickly followed by the dog. 
She then saw my shaved head and made a gagging sound, which I totally agreed with. My revisit to boot camp days is finally over and I'm very happy about that. I honestly feel it would have been a lot easier to actually go back to boot camp instead of do this weird experiment alone in isolation. The camaraderie of the other recruits really makes the experience in isolation much more manageable. What I experienced was basically very disciplined hermitdom. Doing this though did hit on a lot of the core points of the boot camp experience. You really do start to feel completely isolated from the world. In fact, you feel like you aren't even a part of it anymore. That's how complete our quarantine from the real world was. When you deploy, you still get news, TV, internet, phone calls, emails, all kinds of ways to stay in touch. Unless you happen to go really far down range, of course. But at boot, we got none of that and I definitely nailed that isolation and loneliness. Stepping back into the real world is kind of going to be weird, let alone eating food at a leisurely pace or even eating what I want. I was very strict about my meals and stuck to a plan that resembled what I remember from boot, but now I get to eat what I want again. Tomorrow I'm hitting in and out the moment they open and it's going to take a SWAT team to get me out. I've reflexively found myself saying sir and ma'am a lot now again. I occasionally got to interact with the outside world during my experience, like having to go to appointments or grocery shopping, and I was calling people sir and ma'am constantly. You can always tell when a kid is fresh from boot because every other word out of their mouth is sir or ma'am. There are a lot of things I couldn't simulate, like an FTX or field training exercise. That's typically a big part of the final weeks at boot camp when you go out into the field and live in the weeds for a few days. The constant stress of being yelled at and having aggressive drill instructors in your face is another factor I couldn't simulate, which I feel is pretty much the cornerstone experience of boot camp. The constant PT though is something I definitely did and I had to tell you, it's really easier when you're part of a group. There's something to be said for the way the military makes you do PT with your unit. Being part of a machine, one cog out of many, makes even physically exhausting tasks manageable. I made a deliberate choice to leave the military after six years to find a more peaceful life, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't miss it intensely at times. Especially the part where you find yourself operating so far past your limits that you look back and can't even see them anymore, and your team is right there beside you. The first time you experience that moment, it's something you just don't forget, and you typically first get your own moment in boot. Depending on what your job ends up being in the military, you might find yourself there often, and it's terrifying, exhilarating, and the most alive you'll ever feel. It's also addicting, and eventually you'll hit that point where you'll have to choose whether you want a shot at living a normal life or not, if your luck doesn't run out first. Think you could handle boot camp? Have you been through boot camp recently? Let us know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more great content.